As um, most of you know, I'm Michael Linke. I'm the General Manager here at the Australian Institute of Architects, and it's really um, a huge honour to, again, chair today's session, um, and especially, of course, welcoming uh, you, Stephen, um, from Cameron and Co Architects. Many of you um, know Stephen as well. So we have two projects that we're going to spend some time with Steve at the moment. And what we'll do is we'll keep this very informal, of course, and um, I just want you to take us through the two projects that have been shortlisted uh, in these areas. So at the, at the uh, present time, what we do have is um, we have the project shortlisted in the interiors category. And the first one is the 100 uh, Creek Street redevelopment, Stephen. So um, without further ado, over to you, mate, to uh, tell us about this project and, and how it came about and uh, any interesting notes to feature us. All right. Thanks, Michael. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here it's in an interesting format. Um, it's, uh, it's always difficult to talk to, uh, to your work to a, an audience that you, that you um, can't see, but hopefully this is at least um, somewhat informative and potentially entertaining. We'll see how we go um, with how it all works out. So I've got 10 minutes to talk about um, 100 Creek Street. So this is a project um, that, as the name denotes, is at 100 Creek Street in Brisbane. Um, it's on the corner of uh, Creek Street and Adelaide Street. So this is an office tower um, that was built in the... Uh, in the late 70s uh, by uh, the architect who was originally Conrad and Garkett, um, who are still good friends of ours, just down the street in Brisbane. Um, and this is a building that has incredibly strong bones. It's got a beautiful raw concrete structure, as you can see with this little part plan that we've got here that just sort of covers part of the ground level um, that we've kind of worked with in this refurbishment. Um, there's a very regular rhythm at about 5.1 5 5 meter spacings of, of massive concrete columns that run all the way up the 25 stories of the building. There's a very powerful concrete core at the center of the building. Um, one of the key things we worked with with this was with our client who was ISPT, who are a long-term property owner uh, with this building and, they, and they're still out of this day and will continue to be, um, was in terms of repositioning this asset um, in sort of investment parlance is to look at what's it really doing with the street? What's its, what's its contribution to city life? Um, how can this building be, um, a much stronger and more sort of convivial part of the Brisbane urban landscape. So these aren't things that we take lightly. They're not things that are sort of throwaway motherhood gestures. They're, they're, they're real considerations. So the, the biggest thing that we wanted to start with, with redeveloping this building was um, opening up the facade entirely to the street. So it makes sense on the plan here. Um, originally, what you can see with these little center pivot doors um, was, was frameless glass that went all the way around um, the Creek Street and the Adelaide Street frontages, um, which is a very strong um, sort of modernist approach. Um, and it gives a great sense of transparency into the foyer. Um, but what we wanted to do was actually break that open completely. So it wasn't just visually transparent, it's physically transparent as well. Um, and then part of our, our landscape work around that was to blur that edge in classic Queenslander style where the, the point where you go from being outside the building to inside the building is a very indistinct area. Um, the building takes ownership over the street but likewise, the street starts to take some ownership over the interior of the building as well. The main lobby, um, which is sitting here, was preserved um, more or less um, untouched. The floor finishes are the same. The ceiling is obviously completely different. We'll get to that. Um, but that space is, a, is a frequently used as a function space um, by the building owners, ISPT, for all kinds of events. So it was important that that wasn't built out, that it was preserved um, as, a, as an open, generous space. There's a little, a little meeting space that's, that's tucked off to the side here in the lift lobby. Um, instead of the usual option of, a, of another cafe that might off front on the Creek Street, um, we've got along the back of the building here is Gresham Lane that many of you will know really well, which is one of the Brisbane's, if not, well, it's, it's probably the, the most active and bustling laneway in the entire CBD with a ton of food retail that's already there. Um, and there's also a new little lane with market stalls um, that's called Dame Nilly Melbourne Lane um, between 100 Creek and 88 Creek Street here. Um, that gives plenty of retail options and shopping and food options for people. So adding another one in wasn't seen as a, as a significant benefit to the space. So a small little informal meeting space that's just shielded off with some brass curtains from the, the rest of the lobby is what we put in there. And there's a lot of re refurbishment work in the lobbies. Um, and then the big um, feature element that's um, edging the core is a massive video display wall, which we worked very closely um, with an art agency in Sydney called Vandal, and obviously with our clients to curate um, some video art and only art um, that goes on that wall that presents a really strong image towards the street. So for the purpose of this presentation, we can probably skip through 
um, the sections pretty quickly. There's also an end of trip facility that's part of this project, um, which is up on level one. One of the benefits of being on level one for an endo trip is that uh, obviously you have natural daylight. So unlike most endo trips, which are in basements, this one has the benefit of having a laneway frontage. Uh, so we wanted to make the most of that, which we'll get to in the photographs we can have a look at in a second. So this is the building as it presents to the street. Um, obviously you can see there, the, the main structure of the building is left completely untouched. The raw concrete, the beautiful facade, which is floor to ceiling glass inside. The leopard trees, which are amazing above the street. So most of our work is consolidated into this ground plane here and then core works up through the tower. So the landscaping elements that we added around the perimeter of the building give these beautiful moments to pause, um, give the building a really generous civic presence. People can sit and have their coffees. Beautiful people can sit and have a chat about beautiful things. It's just lovely little light elements that we've added on as little sort of familiar gestures to the street that give the building a sense of offering um, even more personality to the street. And then this is the, the kind of the, the image that really talks about what we've done with the facade of the building. So these center pivot panels, um, which automatically open and close depending on weather, if it's windy or if it's hot, uh, they close. If it's, if it's a day like today, then they're wide open, which allows the Brisbane's natural climate to spill right through. And anybody can walk in right into the foyer, take a seat inside here, um, enjoy the artwork that's happening on the, on the massive video display wall here. Um, and there's, it's, not a, it's not a place that's um, set out as, as your classic private commercial lobby. It's a place that gives something directly to the street. Um, as a place, if we go back to that first image where there's a lot of people queuing up for buses on Creek Street on a regular basis, um, it offers this sort of um, gentle little buffer zone on the edge here, which becomes a kind of a secure little spot a stationary point on the edge of a very, what is a very busy footpath. So the, the big foyer preserved, the power of the, the video screen, um, which is overlaid onto, as you can see at the bottom here, just the raw concrete that's left exposed, almost like pulling up the skirts and showing a bit of ankle as the core hits the, hits the, hits the floor there. And that's a detail we've run up through the entire building. We've just overlaid this very raw, powerful concrete with the bare minimum of, of stone or brass or whatever the key detail may be um, to add a sense of um, tactile luxury to what is otherwise a very strong, very powerful building. The foyer is a very simple little detail of multiple little miniature vaults um, that actually that extends a sense of vertical scale um, within the space, but preserving all the services that need to run through um, within that. And it's got a beautiful rhythm that, that, that aligns with the existing structural grid and with the center pivot panels that open out onto the street. It's pretty nice here in the mornings. So the lift lobby uh, is, a, is obviously the key arrival space in the building. The floors remain from um, what was there originally in the building. And there's this beautiful, rich stone that sits on top of the really, the, actually the, the beautiful raw concrete that we discovered when we did a lot of tactical demolition, which is kind of how we start most of our projects. Um, there's a datum um, that sits above that that has this beautiful, generous little vaulted uplit ceiling that, that um, maximizes the amount of vertical space we can have in the ground level lobby where we can. Beautiful brass details around the lift lobby, all made by the actual lift uh, manufacturer themselves. And the, the quality of work that's going in there is really beautiful. Little brass curtain meeting space in the lobby. Custom light indicators. And then up in the main part of the building, it's a pretty brave approach to having raw concrete um, in a lobby space um, in a commercial office building. Um, it's one that we want to take our clients on and they were happy to go on that journey. Um, and the outcome has this sort of beautiful texture of this is the actual reality of this building we're dealing with here. And it's a beautiful thing. So if we just hone that and seal it beautifully, then we get this wonderful durable finish. This is the lobby that goes into the end of trips the natural daylight that you can see there, which is a wonderful asset for these spaces um, that passes through from the laneways through their little um, bespoke um, uh, spaces in the middle here and then through more frosted glass into the showers beyond. So there's natural daylight that goes right through every aspect of the end of trip. And the same palette of stone offset against the original building raw concrete 
that continues all the way up. And the inner trip, uh, the, uh, the standard building amenities, this goes all the way up through the tower. So where there's these beautiful concrete walls, we preserved them um, and made them stripped them bare and given them a, a strength of presence all of their own and then overlaid onto that a series of kind of whimsical, interesting details that give us little glimpses of ourselves and give a sense of luxury to the, the daily tasks of um, working in an office, which hopefully we'll all get back to um, sometime in the not too distant future. And then we go at the end of the day at 100 Creek Street. Um, Michael, I think I've hit my 10 minutes on that one. Um, so is the, should I jump on to the other one now? Or how do you I mean, do very quick, it is a, it's such a beautiful build. Sorry, I was just marvelling at all the <laughs> hand wash stations. All of that bespoke design is beautiful. What yeah. I would say, we've got quite a few people on this chat. So yeah. um, if, if anybody has any questions for Stephen, we'll keep this very informal. So if you do right. want to ask any questions of Stephen, on this project or the equally impressive project that's coming up next, then by all means, just jump onto the chat and ask a question. And then I can curate those with Stephen and we can go through them together as well. We'll keep it very formal. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that. That is a, that polished, cement, the, you know, that external facing cement, that um, exposed concrete, just that's, I love that style. This beautiful is beautiful. Thing. This is very me. Um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit then on, on your second project that's been shortlisted into the awards. And we'll say yes. very good luck for, for that existing project. Thank also you. want to wish you luck for the second project, which is about uh, the office fit out that you've done uh, yes. for the Department of Industry, Innovation and Science. Uh, tell us a little bit about your project and take us through what you've done there. All right. Well, I've got it sitting right here. Is one I prepared earlier, uh, Michael. So, um, and yes, we've, we've um, taken the the uh, contrary stance of, of competing against ourselves um, in this category. But uh, I, I really believe in both of these projects. Interestingly, that they're both inside the same building. So this is a fit out um, on level 13 of the building. We were just having a little brief tour through. So here for the first time, you can see an entire floor plan of the entire um, office building. You can see it doesn't get much more rigorous and regular and um, you know strong and powerful than that. So this is for a government um, department of industry, innovation, and science. Um, so even though they're called the Department of Industry, Innovation, and Science, um, one of the early briefs that we had from these guys as, as a, who, and they were an excellent client, um, was that innovation, industry, and science are their mandate and their job is to assist um, innovators to make connections with people in industry. Um, they don't, the people who actually work here day to day aren't necessarily the innovators themselves. So there were, we had to make a, a space that allowed for a range of um, standard government um, allowances, but also allowed for this space to talk to the agenda of innovation um, and, and, and creating partnerships between um, innovators and industry in a spirit of collaboration. So a lot of this space is about that idea that there's two parts to it. There's the, there's the, the, the workspace side, which is just very minimal, very simple, just workstations, um, and then there's the other side of it, which is this sort of um, a luxurious sort of timbered, um, tactile, very warm environment, which is the moments where the interface between the, um, the people with the ideas and the people who can fund the ideas or promote the ideas um, come into play. Uh, and then a, where we've got little meeting spaces for the staff, one of the key things we did there was cut away the existing ceilings that are part of the base building um, with any fit out and expose the services above there. And um, even though it was a bit controversial with, um, with a lot of the end users, um, the intention with that was that um, with every shiny, beautiful product that we create, there's, uh, it's like making a it's sausage making. There's, you know, you don't want to see what goes into it, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that's really important. So when we, because without those things, the beautiful shiny product can't exist. So um, we tried to cut away some little moments there so you can see the services. You can see there's a whole lot of moving parts that work and function and aren't necessarily beautiful or pretty, but they've got to be there to make sure that the, the thing that we all want to experience um, works as it should. So we've kept those things in there um, where there's these little collaboration and conversation spaces that the staff use generally. So to flick through this, this is a, um, a fit out design for a whole floor. Um, if you look at where the north point down the bottom here, um, north is kind of you know, heading off in this direction. So the, the conference spaces and the, the flexible meeting space on this sort of northern corner here um, is, the, is the prominent corner of the building. Um, the two street frontages are Creek Street and Adelaide Street. 
there's um, what used to be called ISPT lane. There's now Dame Nelly Bubble Lane down one side and Gresham Lane down the other. Um, the laneway frontages have shorter um, views to nearby towers. Um, the street um, frontages tend to have more expansive views right across the city. And in, in the case of um, the, uh, the northeastern corner over here, amazing views um, down at the river as well. One of the key things for that though, is that this Adelaide Street facade really gets hammered by the sun in the afternoons. And in Brisbane, that's a big deal. So one of the things that we wanted to do with this fit out was to specifically tailor a screened edge inside the glazing line to the star fab, which was positioned at the warmest part of the, of the floor. So it had the least impact on general work, worker comfort. And also then screen the edge to um, the, the conference and sort of multi-use space along here. So we can really keep a stronger control over the impact of the sun, not just in terms of heat, but in terms of light and glare management as well. So all the kind of ancillary gathering spaces, these are um, occasional meeting spaces in through here, gather down the, the sort of the, well, the, the northwestern facade. And then the workspaces tend to collect around the shadier parts of the office that can be used in general. All the utility spaces are tucked in tight against the side of the core here, um, with sort of the core cupboards opening out into a, neatly into a little utility area here where they're kind of tucked away out of the way. Let's get through the sections. So what we end up with is a, is a little sequence of really beautiful little vignettes. Um, it's not a, when, when you approach this fit out or this office space, um, the first thing that actually greets you is a custom uh, stone aperture that because there's no reception in this government building, there's an aperture that frames an uh, outlook into a single seat inside where you can be seen as coming in, you can be checked in. Um, from there, you move your way into this space which branches off into the, uh, the conference space to one side the smaller bedroom to the other side and there's these little glimpses out to the city and as you can see in here we've we've pulled back the the um we've, we've painted the raw concrete and left it exposed as with the rest of the base building work just to show hey this building has this real structure it's got this real mass and power that holds it all together but then the finish we put over that is this beautiful natural timber The staff hub is a very warm space. This is that screen I was talking about earlier that fronts onto Adelaide Street. Um, staff hubs are places where, <laughs> where um, collaboration between people happens informally and we try to set that up across all of our fit outs. So what you really want is a space where chance encounters can unfold, conversations can happen, um, people feel comfortable to sit into different parts of, of that space. One of the key parts of this brief was to create on the left-hand side of this image here, there's a little moment where there's a, a, a the, the screen breaks down and a timber kind of a mini proscenium arch is formed that gives a view out across the city if i skip to this next one it's this little moment here where there was an initial brief for a lectern for so the boss to give kind of um, presentations to the staff or people to give presentations to each other we thought the lectern was a bit formal and a bit um, restrictive so Instead, we detail in a specific little little side bench here, which is you know, perfect for having an iPad next to you while you're addressing a, a group of people or for putting a box of charity chocolates or whatever it might be within the, the, um, the staff hub. So that's a little, little moment that is framed towards a specific function, but it's got sort of broader reaching capabilities than that. Some lovely detailing. Carrying this, this sort of screen facade um, texture through to just a sort of a serrated edge that buffers between the staff hub and then the main workspace beyond that. And then moving into the workspaces that that sort of experience I was talking about earlier where we've pulled all the, the ceiling out here. So when you're, you're sitting having a conversation about whatever project you might be working on here, there's this visual reminder that, hey, things have to work, things have to, you know, we've, we've, there's a bunch of things that need to be sorted out before we can deliver on, on any kind of vision. But Delivering on the vision is all obviously the end goal that we're all heading towards. And there's those river views sitting down beyond there. Um, that consistent raw detail that's carried right through, which is some beautiful little details that you don't often see in offices where um, it's kind of bridging a gap, um, which is a gap that's going to be more and more bridged as we sort of, you know, move into a um, the new office workplace future that we're all about to move into, um, where there's a, a more um, blurred distinction between home and work. Um, in, in practice now and also in the, in the way that we carry out the detailing and the work that we do. 
and lastly, just wrapped around the core, there's these beautiful little moments for um, quiet rooms and little sort of meetings that take take you off to the side of the main workspace. So you can duck in here in a kind of a booth style environment, or if it's just a you know walking past with a coffee in your hand and you want to have a sit down and a bit of a, a chat that's longer than 30 seconds, then there's little moments tucked into the core to facilitate that or having a, having a read or whatever might um, be at hand. And that's pretty much the overview of that one, Michael. So. Looks great. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Um, you didn't, you know, uh, you've got 10 minutes to present, but I always, I'm pretty casual with that kind of stuff. You put so much effort into the presentation. <laughs> into the build. I'm not going to penalise you for, for that. Um, I'm here I watching my, my you, timer. I uh, know, but um, you kept the time perfectly. So thanks yeah. for that. I do, want to wish you the, I do want to wish you the very best of luck in the lead up to the awards. We never Thank thought you. that we would be in a situation when we launched the awards pro. Uh, process, you know, many months ago that we'd be sitting here in our living rooms and bedrooms and dining tables and wherever else, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but I'm very pleased that the organisation has continued the awards. We need mm. more than ever, really, for our architecture to have a strong voice. Uh, and um, so I will say to everybody on this call, we've got quite a few people watching, that the Queensland State Awards will be streamed live 7pm Australian Eastern Standard Time, of course, on Thursday, the 9th of July. So put that date in your diary, Thursday, 9th of July, 7pm, Queensland State Awards, where these two projects uh, are going into the running for the interiors category uh, for the Queensland Architecture Prize. And then, of course, if they're are fortunate enough they, to win, then they go into the category for the national awards. By then, we should be able to have a physical event, we imagine. Get so excited. We'll be able to see people face to face. Yeah, How I'm about that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm sick of um, the inside of my house at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to getting back to some semblance of normality without a doubt. So thank you, Stephen, Stephen Cameron, everybody from Cameron and & Co. And uh, great to have you with us. And Pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you all on... Uh, on uh, the live stream on Thursday, the 9th of July for the Queensland Architect Awards. Have a great day, everybody. Can't and, wait. Uh, look forward to seeing you all online fairly soon. Great <laughs> to see you all. Thanks, Michael. Cheers.